don't make the medic's life more difficult? By its very nature, warfare is dangerous. In order to mitigate the suffering it inevitably causes, combat medics, surgeons, and other medical personnel will go above and beyond to ensure that even the most grievously injured soldier has a chance of survival. In spite of this, there are some things that soldiers have done that serve no purpose other than to make the already overworked medical staff's life that much more difficult. These are some of the actions that cause the medic to wince in frustration. Don't light a cigarette with a flamethrower. For over a century, soldiers and tobacco have been inextricably linked, whether due to the stressful nature of their profession, the boredom that inevitably comes with military life, or any other factor. Tobacco use was common, and cigarettes were often given to soldiers as part of their rations. Of course, in recent decades, the health risks of tobacco usage are well known, though they are usually cumulative, only occurring after many years of continuous usage. Sometimes, the risks can be more immediate. Since the First World War, flamethrowers were part of the arsenals of many nations, playing an important role in the trenches of the Western Front, the jungles of the Pacific Theater, and many other places across the world. There are many variants, but all share the same basic operating principle. A flammable liquid is pumped from a fuel tank, through a hose, and sprayed out of a nozzle. The liquid is ignited from an open pilot light at the end of the spout. There is no documented case of someone lighting their cigarette from the burning stream, something even the most daredevil soldier wouldn't seriously consider. Though there are numerous examples of soldiers lighting their cigarettes with the pilot light at the end of the nozzle. While this may look cool, this practice is extremely dangerous. Putting one's face close to an open flame can lead to severe injury. Something as simple as an unexpected gust of wind could blow the flame into exposed skin. Something similar happened in 1916 when a French flamethrower regiment was conducting an assault on German positions, when a gust of wind blew the burning fuel back on the operators, killing 25 of them. The effects of a pilot light won't be so dramatic, but the risk is still the same. Even briefly touching exposed skin to hot metal can lead to burns. These include second-degree burns, which can involve blisters and discoloration and is extremely painful, and possibly third-degree burns, which destroys all layers of skin and sears away nerve endings. Both include a risk of infection and further long-term complications. If there is a desire to smoke, it's advised to light up with a match or a Zippo to avoid these hazards. Did you know that every tree in this forest has its own unique fingerprint? Just like every watch from Holzkern. Today, I'm not just taking you on a walk through nature, but through time and craftsmanship. This beauty, it's from a brand that's as unique as a fingerprint, and that's no coincidence. But first, let me rewind a bit. You see, when I was a kid, I heard that tick tick of my grandfather's watch. That's where my obsession began with timepieces. So now I'm here to share with you a slice of that same magic from Holzkern. It's a brand that's all about bringing the essence of nature right onto your wrist. And not just any nature. I'm talking FSC certified, no deforestation, pure natural materials. Imagine this. You're standing there, surrounded by the whispers of the Austrian forest. That's the feeling you get with Holzkern's designs. They've made over a million customers happy in just seven years, with a thousand plus unique designs. Yet yeah, it's not just a watch, it's a statement. From Vienna, with love, straight to your doorstep. And shipping is on them. Got a vacation coming up? Grab their sunglasses. Date night? Their watches are conversation starters. Oh, and before I forget, from today on, Holtzkern's got a great deal going on. Buy a watch and an accessory and get a gift for someone special absolutely free. If you happen to see this after the promotion is over, you can still use the code in the description to get 15% off. And because you're all part of the Simple History community, here's what I want you to do. Find the link in the description or the pinned comment, use that code, and start telling your own time-telling tale. So, are you ready to wear the essence of the forest, to carry a piece of the Earth's story with you? Then join me and make your mark be as unique as your own fingerprint. Don't cook with C4 plastic explosive. There's no doubt about the morale boost of a warm meal, especially in a combat zone. 
To this end, soldiers have resorted to less than conventional methods to heat their food up. During the Vietnam War, American soldiers in the field would subsist primarily on sea rations, prepackaged meals that provide all the nutrients and calories needed. Soldiers would also be issued heating tabs, designed to heat the sea rations to make them more palatable. Sometimes, however, these heating tabs were unavailable, forcing troops to improvise. Along with their other equipment, American soldiers would be given a Claymore anti-personnel mine. The main explosive that activated the mine was a block of C4. When they had downtime, soldiers would disassemble the Claymore, breaking off a piece of the putty-like substance and using it as fuel for heating their rations. This action was, and still is, frowned upon by the military. Contrary to popular belief, C4 is remarkably stable and will not explode unless a detonator is used. It will burn, however, and produce a highly toxic smoke. In addition, the fumes smell really bad, with one veteran saying that a sniff of smoke will cause you to, quote, lose half your brain cells, end quote. The chemicals in the explosive, particularly RDX, also known as cyclonite, have been known to cause seizures, nausea, dizziness, and if inhaled or ingested in large enough doses, kidney failure, permanent neurological damage, and gastrointestinal issues. A medic in the field would not have the ability or proper equipment to deal with these problems. Furthermore, by removing some of the explosive from the claymore, it becomes less effective, meaning its function is significantly diminished. It's recommended that a soldier use a provided heating tab or just endure a cold meal rather than take the health risk or interfere with the effectiveness of the Claymore. Don't drink from a gun barrel. In 1994, a 19-year-old French soldier was initiated into his artillery regiment. After several rounds were fired from a 155mm howitzer, he drank 250 milligrams of wine that were poured down the barrel, a unit tradition. About 15 minutes later, he began convulsing, with seizures lasting for almost half an hour. After being rushed to the hospital, he was subjected to a battery of tests, all of which came back normal. After more testing, it was concluded that he had suffered from acute tungsten poisoning, the first recorded case of such a condition. Further analysis suggested that tungsten was not to blame, but rather RDX, or cyclonite, the main ingredient in C4 as well as other explosives, here being used as a propellant charge. In a similar fashion, soldiers stationed in Vietnam have been documented shotgunning marijuana, where one soldier inhales from a joint, then exhales the smoke into the receiver of a shotgun, propelling it down the barrel. Another soldier inhales the smoke as it escapes from the muzzle of the weapon. Either way, drinking wine or any other substance from the barrel of a gun is highly dangerous. Whether it be an artillery piece or a rifle, the barrel, as well as other internal workings, can be coated with any number of harmful chemicals. These include residue from gunpowder and other explosive propellants, toxic metals such as lead, as well as lubricants, solvents, and other noxious chemicals that can have a negative impact on health. Dirt, grime, bacteria, and other contaminants can also be found in the workings of any firearm which are best kept away from the mouth. This practice is also a violation of the second rule of universal firearm safety that also includes artillery pieces, which states that the user of a firearm should never point the muzzle of the weapon at anything or anybody unless you fully intend to harm them. Voluntarily placing one's head directly at the business end of a shotgun or any other weapon can be charitably described as reckless, if not outright insane. Needless to say, the medic, as well as the rest of the medical personnel, highly discourage this practice. Avoid violations of the universal rules of firearm safety. In order to avoid serious injury or death when operating firearms, as well as other similar weapons, such as artillery pieces and flamethrowers, the universal rules of firearm safety was developed. They are, number one, treat every weapon as if it was loaded. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Number three, do not point the firearm at anything you are unwilling to shoot. And number four, be sure of your target and what's around it and behind it. For example, don't look down the barrel of a gun when cleaning it. Disassemble the piece before doing so. Only when the barrel is detached from the rest of the weapon is it safe to look down. If the firearm jams or has any other malfunction, do not, under any circumstance, look down the barrel to check for an obstruction or any other reason. Keep it pointed in a safe direction until the issue is resolved. 
For soldiers fighting in ranks, as was done in the era of black powder weapons, it's imperative that close order be maintained. Should fire by rank be required, those in the rear ranks must be able to fire over the heads or shoulders of those in front. If there's too much distance between these ranks, unfortunate accidents can occur. Likewise, those who kneel when conducting volley fire must stay in a kneeling position until ordered to do otherwise. Do not carelessly place yourself in a position where you are in line with the muzzle of your comrade's weapon. Lastly, be certain of what you're shooting at before pulling the trigger. Blue-on-blue -blue incidents are tragic and can often be avoided with the proper target identification. Warfare is dangerous enough. By following these rules, as well as using common sense, unnecessary casualties and incidents can be avoided, and the medic's life can be made just a bit easier. It's unique as your own fingerprint.